Hey, it's the Chief Bonding with Board Games. It's a review of 878 Vikings, Invasions of England. This one is by David Kimmel. David Kimmel, I got it right. Now, the system itself is based on um, a trilogy from Bo Beckett and Jeff Stahl that were all about the Americas, um, 1812, 1775, and 1754. They have almost the exact same system, but it's almost like theme. And that this one is way more asymmetrical in terms that the Vikings are coming in and invading England and just using leaders to just, just gash deep into England. And the English player or players are trying to hold off and repel that invasion using um, two different, like the King's troops and then some other great house of, I can't remember, and like local militia. I always say it wrong, called the Fjords, Fjords. All right, but it's that asymmetrical feel. Let me go in, I'll show you the system of kind of how the turns work. It's very, very simple. Think uh, area control um, uh, dice that are weighted for the strength of the different factions and the ability that troops uh, can either win that conflict, flee from the conflict, or you can use command decisions to tactically, tactfully move them on the map in the course of a battle. Let's go take a look at that right now. Well, here we are with 878 Vikings Invasion of England. So let me pan down and zoom out a little bit. Sorry if that was too fast. So you're gonna see very elongated board. All right, you can see your three different regions and you can see the little little white lines that kind of separate the provinces. Now, I will probably zoom in. I'll, I'll definitely zoom in a little bit later and I'll show you some of the cities and you can already see these little man figures that are on the board. That's the pre-setup. Now, you can also see these berserkers over here and these other normal Vikings over here and they will actually end up sitting on a card that I have placed over there. I've just kind of got them set up. So what you have is a very nice board with kind of a linen finish. Um, I'm going to pan over. You have um, your two English factions, and then this is like your city militia or your villagers that you can bring up and uh, assist you, hopefully, in a fight, although they're not the most skilled. So you got blue and green. Um, by the way, these trays, so this these plastic trays all come hooked together in the uh, bottom of the box. You break them apart, and then, let me grab, so here's one where uh, I keep my yellow guys. There's one extra little yellow dude. There's these little slide-on, slide-off plastic covers. So I can keep my dice in here. I can keep the little men in here and I can keep their cards all in here. And this game handles, uh, really you can play it solo, although I think it handles, it plays best with two, but it really scales up nicely to three or four. You can end up having one person playing each of the factions. And uh, so you got two folks working together and two folks working on the, uh, on the Viking side. But what's nice is you can literally hand them this tray and the dice fit in here, and then the uh, cards will fit in, and then you just slide everything over the top, and really a nice function. I've been playing war games since 1983, and they used to have this horrible tray that was huge, sat in the bottom, never worked right, you had to rubber band it in. Sorry, I got excited over bits. All right, speaking of bits, let me show you real quick. These dice are all um, like engraved. All right, they've got uh, command things on them, sword fighting things, guys running away. We'll cover that in a little bit. Everybody's going to be dealt three cards. Uh, the cards are real interesting. This will be how many different armies you can move, and I'll cover what an army is on the board here in a little bit. And then this is how far they can move. So this card, you could actually move four different armies further, too. Nice 
symbology here. And then you've got some cards that are text that allow you to do special little things. So like here, um, kind of reading through the camera, but each English army uh, may move up to two extra shires this turn. So you maybe played this, but they can move two extras. So you're able to make the card a little bit better. Shires are these little, you can see the little white regions that are on there. So they'd be able to move further. And the, the cards, everything's quite simple. Uh, high, high quality. Let me roll over. You'll be trying to capture different shires. When the Vikings do, they're going to put their little helms on them. You can see I've got some uh, Berserker cards for the Vikings, some other Viking cards. Uh, you're going to see that like uh, the Berserkers, much like the, uh, I forget what they're called, but the Blue Faction, they only have two dice. And I'll get into how the dice work and uh, the actual turn order in a second. But I just wanted to show again the layout. And then up here, um, there's actually a leader phase, which is different for uh, this series. There was a whole uh, trilogy of the Americas that dealt with 1775 and 1812 and 1754. And this leader phase is very unique to this system. So the system is still very familiar, but there's a lot of asymmetry going on here. Quite literally, as you may already know, the Vikings are invading England and these guys aren't ready. They're just not ready. All right, first I'll show you just a little something on setup. So you can see you got, instead of cubes, the uh, Birth of America series used cubes. So you would add a blue cube and a green cube. They've actually, uh, Academy Games has done these little tiny figures, which are kind of nice. Some people actually want the cubes. I will admit, um, I like to have my dudes standing up. So I take a little bit of extra time, and every once in a while I'd have a dude laying down, and I'm just... OCD, I guess, I had to have them sit, sit in the proper way. So, for setup, you look at these little mounds. They literally visually tell you, well, there's going to be a blue dude with a spear, and there's going to be a green dude there, and you're going to go put them on. And you're going to do that all over the map, so you can see what's going on. Now, the key is these little cities. This symbol designates a city, and you can also see it designates reinforcements. So we're going to get into that when we do a full turn, but when blue gets a turn, they're going to be putting their dudes on the map. So it's as if they've mustered more guys, or green will be putting dudes on a map as long as the Vikings don't hold that area. If they hold that area, you're not going to get reinforcements. But let me walk through a turn. So normally when you begin a turn, you're going to draw one of these blank cubes just like that one, out of this bag. And it's going to randomly determine the order. So you don't know if the Berserker Vikings are going to go first, the regular, or I don't know, the little more regular, not so Berserker Vikings are going to go, whether your blue Englishmen are going to go or your green. However, on the very first turn, the black Viking player is going to go first. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that the... Vikings draw a card right in the beginning of their turn off of this deck. Now this deck in the future is going to have a bunch, if I can get far enough away, it's got a bunch of different Viking leaders, historically correct, that are going to have dudes that are coming in. So this one would have 17 of the Black Vikings, 8 of the Berserkers. They're going to be coming in and raiding into England. So you can get a picture here. This one's just plain reinforcements. So instead of a leader actually coming in with a bunch of guys on ships, you're just going to reinforce your areas you have. But you can see you've got a little spattering, smattering, spattering, spattering is probably not too far off, that are going to be coming in. These are shuffled up and random, but your very first guy is not. So you're going to start, go on baby, focus. There we go. So you're going to start with Hofton's great heathen host. You're going to have 17 guys and uh, black vikings and eight berserkers that are going to be coming in and they're going to invade from the North Sea coast which is in this area over here. So let me set that up and I'll show you real quick. Let me position. 
Um, just walking through, since we're on here, you can see this is where you'll be placing the cubes. You'll actually be placing guys that run away in this area. This is going to show you your turn phases. You can see you're very limited. It's only going to go a maximum of seven turns. You can see in turn five is when the English king will be arriving with his guys to help fight off the hordes. All right, the card's down. I have these guys ready. I'll just keep these guys on the card. And once they're on the card, you won't be moving them around. It would be extremely fiddly. So they came up with a visual representation, a standee of that leader. And you can end up with multiple Viking leaders or chieftains roaming around England and savaging. So all it says is they've got to come in from the North Sea. Here's your delineating mark. You could literally say, well, he's going to come in, all right, right here, and he's going to land right in this territory. Let me zoom up. And again, one of the interesting things that is unique with this leader system, I'm going to lay this down. Well, okay, you can see him. Is that as this horde moves, he or the player is able to drop off Vikings as he goes or she goes. So I could come into here, there's absolutely no one here, and I could say, you know what, I want to drop off one of the black guys, and you know what, I want to have a berserker in here too, because when red takes their turn, they can manipulate armies. This will become its own army as I leave this territory. This shire will be an army of just two, so it's going to have one red guy, one black guy, but now I could have either cube. So if the black cube's drawn, the black player, the person that's playing the black Vikings, could move this army group. It's considered an army group if they're all in a shire together. Or if the red player gets a uh, cube gets drawn, they can move it. That's a key facet of this system is when you draw the black cube, you can only move your black Vikings. Now, if they're together, you get to move the entire horde. If they're not, you know, if there's a, um, a a huge red horde without any black Vikings on it at all, you can't even move them. So you want to keep your units coalesced? No, mixed. Let's just say mixed. You want to keep them mixed. All right, so he could come in, boom, he's moving, and he's able to, and I should have told you, the black player would have had to have played a card. So he's played a card that says he can move two armies up to four spaces. So one of his armies is going to be this Viking as he moves on. So that's his rules. So he's moving on and he's dropping guys off as he goes. So he comes in and now he's going to have a battle with these folks as he comes in. The battles are real simple. He has a ton of black Viking guys on there, but there's only three dice for the uh, Vikings that are black in color. So he's going to get to roll all three of those. And there's only two for the red. So he's going to get to roll, because he has at least two units that are red, he's going to be able to roll all of his dice. Now the dice are real cool. You're going to have axes, which means he's killed off one of the enemy units. You're going to have this little like horn, which is a command action, which I'm going to cover in a second. And black um, only has one side, I believe, that runs. If I can get it right, that means he will run. If he gets a run, then it means one of these Vikings will go up to that little, that's kind of like a shield area, and he will have fled battle. But he will be coming back later. Now you'll also see these dice aren't exactly the same. The red berserker guys, they will not run. These guys don't flee. They fight and kill. They do have some command orders, but everything else is death. So they are, are not going to run away, but you don't have as many dice for them either. So the Viking player comes in and rolls. Now, if you were playing with um, three people or four people, and if there was a player that was handling the red faction, he or she would roll their red dice. Whoever's hand, handling the black faction would roll their 
uh, black dice. I've only played this with two people where one person is playing the Viking side and the other person is playing the English side. So you know the Vikings are going to roll. Boom, they can roll. At the exact same time, you would have the green player and the blue player, or if there's only one player playing the English rolling. Now you would hope they would have way more troops, but obviously in the beginning they're not. So all they're going to get is one green die, one blue. And they have a similar system where the max they're going to get is going to be three green max, two blue max. However, if there is a city, and you can see there's a city here. I zoomed in on one of them earlier. It looks like a little, almost like a Chinese throwing star. If there's a city, so in this case, I only have one blue guy, one green guy, but because there's a city, I'm going to get to draw one of these fjord, fjord cards. I'm sure I'm saying that exactly right, and I can't draw it one-handed, so... All right, boom, and just to show you what these look like, all right, so you can see he would give me five of these little yellow dudes. These, again, are militia. Uh, these little spear guys, I'm only going to get two. He's got a little knife in there, but boy, he sure doesn't look like he wants to fight. The axe guy looks a little bit more, ooh, we got a little archer. We get three of those. So, again, the picture doesn't matter. It's just kind of flavor, but you can see... You're going to get five dudes if I draw that card. But all I drew was this guy that has like a, a spear and a shield. So on top of this fight, we're going to get four little militia guys that are going to come in and assist. Because it turns out they're not real happy with the Vikings rolling in on them. But here's the problem. They only get two die. And you're going to see that's a flea result. All right, this is blank. They, they just don't do anything. They freeze up. There's a uh, kill result. They would kill Viking. Here's another flea. There's another fight. Here's another flea. So they're going to they're gonna do nothing. They're going to run away, run away, run away, or fight, fight. And did I say run away like five times? Yeah. They usually run away. Now, when these guys run, they won't actually go up to... Uh, there, that's the area where you put all your fled units, doesn't matter what kind, Viking, English, they go up there. But not these dudes, there's not too many of them. So when they flee, uh, they flee back to their box or back to their area. So this fight though, has now gotten at least a little bit more interesting. So the way this would go, if I can do it without knocking everything over. All right, I'm gonna come back to these command results. <laughs> wow, they didn't do too good. They killed off one unit, all right, and this is going to be this battle group here. They're all on the card, but they're represented by the standee. So they're going to kill one unit. Let me roll what these guys do. All right, we got a flea. We got it. Wow, one of them's a good fighter there. We got another good fighter, and we got a command result. So again, let's take care of the losses first. Uh, the Vikings get to decide um, the very first combat, however, that they initiate, they have to lose a berserker. These guys are nuts. They're on shrooms. They're wearing uh, animal skins. They ignore pain, and they run right into the hardest part possible, die and go to Valhalla. This guy goes back. That's the first one they must lose. They lost another one. They don't want to lose another berserker because their dice are great. They decide to lose as I kick the camera, they lose a black figurine. Vikings kill one. I'm going to definitely say, you know what? That's going to be this guy here. He threw a spear and got axed. All right. I had another one run away. And now we're going to come to these command orders. So the Vikings can move, um, well, both sides, but you can move guys that are represented. So I can move two berserkers and I can move two. This is not a result that they would have wanted. I can move them to a neighboring shire as long as they have friendly troops there. I can ignore this, however, as well. This is real good for reinforcing in different areas as long as you have guys there. I could literally take dudes off of the attack here and move four of them over here if I wanted to. There's really no need this isn't a loss, it's just not an attack. 
However, my blue guy says, you know what? There's no way we're holding up to that horde. I don't want to lose one of my more powerful guys. And he is, I, I knocked this guy around from somewhere. I have no idea where he was. And we're going to throw him up there. So this blue guy is going to flee to a neighboring shire. Matter of fact, he's going to flee down here to this shire because there's more troops there. And that is that command action. What's cool, all right, is we had four movement points. One to come on, the second one, he did not wipe this unit out. He's got to go through another phase of attacking. That's going to cost him basically another movement point. So he's used one, two, now three as we go into combat again. And he re-rolls, and boy, did he just stink. Wow, this never happens. Whenever I'm playing, the Vikings go crazy. These are all command results. So they would have done no damage, and he's just stalled there again. And you would see, as I'm knocking pieces all over the place, you get a flea result, which is uh, this green guy's got to go up to that shield area up here. You're going to see that matter later. And yellow flees yet again. Not a bad move. And then, man, you got a fighter in there because they kill off two more units. Now, the first berserker's been taken out already in the first round of combat so it's totally up to the viking player if they want to take a berserker or, or a uh, or a, uh, one of their black vikings they're going to dump off the black vikings all right now i'm not going to keep running through this combat i actually thought these guys would wipe these dudes out and it'd be over real quick but that shows that turn these guys uh would would have stall out right here and I'm going to tell you, usually when they come on, they storm around the map and they really do quite a lot of damage on that very first turn. But hey, that is the beauty of the system. So you can see how combat works, how the dice work, um, uh, the randomness of the result, but the fact that you know my yellow guys probably aren't going to stand and fight. My blues are, my greens are going to be wishy-washy. My berserkers are nuts, but they will slice and dice. Um... Let me pause for a second and I'll show you the next phase. All right, the leader phase is over. You're gonna move into your movement phase, which would mean I had this card played, which again, you can see I can move two armies. So I've moved my leader and now I've got another army that I'm still able to move. And if I wanted to, I could move this army. Let's say I'd even dropped off a bunch more guys. I could move and engage them somewhere else. I'm basically creating several different marauding armies, and then I would resolve that attack. The, again, that is one of the beautiful things with this leader phase is that the leader phase takes place uh, early. So this leader's rampaging around, and then you're gonna get into the movement of your other armies, and then you're gonna resolve battle. But all those things have already happened with the leader phase. You're then gonna just refill your cards, uh, again, usually you're only playing one card unless you've got some text. Let me pull these up and show you. Uh, I won't go through every one, but you can see, and again, that's my lighting. So you've got text cards that are going to allow you to do special little cool things. All right, English Retreat, Shield Wall, love the pictures. And then you can just see most of these guys are just different, you know, move two armies up to three spaces. English traders. All right, victory conditions are if at any time at the end of a round, so all four factions have gone, even if there are no treaty cards out. I'm going to explain the treaties a little bit more in a second. But if 14 shires where their cities are under control of Vikings, it's an automatic Viking win. Now, the way the treaties work, you got the Treaty of Wedman, Wedmore, Wedmore. It, the treaty cards or movement cards you can use in, their, in your hand, and each faction has one. Now, if by the 5th, 6th, or 7th turn, if you have both sides or all sides of a faction have played their treaty cards, so if the red player and the black player have both played their treaty cards, and you're evaluating after the 5th, 6th, or 7th turn, all that matters is, do the Vikings control nine or more of these shires? 
If they have nine or more of their helms on these city shires, they're going to win. If they have fewer than nine, the English win. So as these treaty cards get played, um, they will stay. I usually tuck them in on the side of the board and let you know, hey, the black player has played one of their treaty cards. If another, if the red player gets their treaty card and gets it played, you've got to be immediately knowing they could switch over and trigger victory conditions. Uh, let's see where it is. There it is. There's their, their Treaty of Wedmore. So again, you don't know. This is a shuffled deck. You don't know. They could be hoping to draw the treaty card. They could already have it in their hand. So the key is, if... If you know that they've, they're in control of nine or more shires, you're going to have to immediately strike back and get them out of there. Because if that treaty card gets played, game over. If red is going last and blue has a shot, they're going third, and they come in and they're able to knock them down to seven shires, you better hope that the red player can't come in, play the treaty card, and and if they do... If they get back two of those cities by the end of the round and they're up to nine, they're going to win. But that's where the tension lies because they can play the treaty card and you're like, well, this is it. This is the end of the round or this is the end of the game. And then they make their move. And if they can't get two cities back with Shires, you're going to win. And it makes the game move quicker as well. The only other thing probably that I didn't show is uh, I'll zoom in again. So if I was the green player starting my turn, part of my reinforcements phase is that, see if I can find one. So right here, I would get, whoop, I'm not even on it. Right here, I would get a green player and there's several different locations around the map. I wouldn't get the blue one, but I would get every place where there's green reinforcements, I would get them and I would get my fled units. So when your guys run away, it really sucks in battle, but you're going to get them back later. And it's a really nice part of the system. Um, I think that's a run through. It's really a quite simple and I think elegant system in terms of your turn order. And I've got a little card. They've got uh, two of these. So each player has one where it gives you your, your sequence of play. So it's right there in front of you. It tells you what all your possible dice combinations are. Right? It tells you uh, the number of units that you have and the dice. And then it explains and kind of bolds out where your shires are with the cities. Um, you know, just so you got it right in your hand, right in front of you. And then it kind of walks you through what all these things, all the little symbols mean as well. So again, Academy Games, as far as their, their player aids... Um, phenomenal. And these are the fjords. I always say it wrong. Fjords? Boom. All right. Let me pull out and give you my thoughts. All right. We are back. So first of all, David Kimmel, David Kimmel, David Kimmel. Boy, did you do a good job. The addition of leaders here is phenomenal. The idea that you you start with that first leader and he's got tons of troops on him. He's got these crazy berserkers, the red guys, that are literally taking, uh, I think, I, I can't remember if I read the history in here because they have a whole history deal or if I, I even did some further research that the berserkers would take like mushrooms or, or a narcotic or be drunk and they would just rush headlong into battle. So that whole thing that I mentioned in the playing uh, when a battle starts, if the Vikings lose one of their guys, the very first one in a battle has to be one of the Berserkers. They just rushed blindly into battle. Can you imagine how terrifying that would be when you're even wounding them, but it's not fatal, and they just keep coming, and there's more than one? Brutal. And that is the beauty that Kimmel's brought to this game, that the theme, because in my opinion, the... the what these systems of games do, they're a light area control war game with some dice rolling, with the odds kind of baked right in, and then the theme shifts slightly. 1812 to me was more about mobility and movement and how do you mash your troops and do you do a big group or what, you know, what do you do? 1775 was more about 
this colony and boom, the Brits just dash in on a ship and now they're messing with you and you're gonna have to bring in and stop it. In 1754, the biggest thing that always came to me on that was that the Native Americans can shift allegiance so quickly and, and you gotta be mindful of that because their influence was weighty. And this one is the barbarism. It is, you can feel the barbaric invasion, the fear that the Nordsmen, the Vikings brought to England, the raping, the pillaging, the burning, and the fact that they were very tough, hard men to stand against. I feel that. That's brought across in the theme. And to bring that across in the theme is excellent. All right, my son has played this with me. He quickly under you know that he wanted to know why the why are the red guys which are the uh the uh berserkers why do i have to lose one first in a battle uh because he liked them of course they don't run away <laughs> so i quickly explained to him and he was like whoa and i said and they looked fierce they were they were wild and crazy and the idea that guys are running away you know my green troops kept fleeing and and uh, he was like you're you're your men are fleeing in the face of my superman i'm like mm -hmm. yes they are yeah yeah and the the militiamen coming in to defend their home but just you know he got it. it it brings these games and what academy games does even as a whole and we'll get to uh, production values in a second is bring history to life and it's accessible i've said this with all the other ones that uh, Bo Beckett and Jeff Stahl put out, of course this one's Kimmel, but this system is so, so accessible. And it, and it goes from two to the three, works with three just fine, up to four. So easy to teach. So yes, 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 I, I really, really like this game. I was thinking, okay, the map looks, a, it's a little smaller. It feels more north and south. It is more north and south. And I'm thinking, how is this asymmetric thing going to work? You know, there's these leaders and the guys are on the card but i've got this little standy that was new um, i've got these little figures rather than the cubes by the way that i was even reading some comments some people want the option of the cubes and other people are like no and i think here's the reason why i've got a little ocd a lot of gamers do and i would go put these vikings on the board and one of them falls over we can't let that stand <laughs> i had to go fix i had to make him stand you can't lay down uh-uh, stand up. Whereas with cubes, I admit in all the other games, you just grab your cubes, throw them in there. You don't have to worry about anything more than that. The cubes are there. There's my cubes, all right? I like the little dudes, though, all right? I like the berserkers with their two axes out. Uh, the blue guys, the Englishmen with their, with their spears, I, I liked it. It's, it's a little more fiddly, but thank goodness that I had the standee with the Viking leader that goes on, or even with the king, the English king that comes on, because that now allows you to keep all those troops that are moving around on a card. And there's not that many other troops out there. And when they do move, quite easy. Um, 1812, if you had men in that, it would, it would have driven me crazy. You gotta have cubes. So, again, 878 Vikings, the first move over to Europe. I believe there's at least two more of these going. The other America's series was a trilogy. The educational value that's based here, the production values. Hello. Um, this way you break these little plastic trays out from the mass tray, and then this slides over top and inside fits your cards. Inside fits, I just messed them up by shaking them around, fits your dice and fits your little dudes. Love it. Love it. I remember when I got 1754, I had no idea it was the first time that this storage system was used. I'm like, what the heck are these? <laughs> and I think Uva had to tell me. Uh, yeah, those are they, they go over those. And I'm like, well, I'd have to break my tray. And he's like, yeah. And again, my OCD board game deal. I'm like, I, I'm snapping apart my tray? Why would I do that? Quite simply, so that when we're playing, I can say, you're the Black Viking player. There's your stuff. By the way, you can draw your men right out of this tray. And when you, when you get them killed, they can go right back in the tray. Cleanup's real easy. All right. Production value is nice. 
Um, nice, beyond nice, gorgeous. <clears throat> Steve Peshaw artwork again. Love this man. I love the way his his canvas painting. It, it feels like movement. It, this guy's bearing down on you. I'm running. I'm running. Just letting you know. I better be fast. Um, the standard of the rule book, the breakouts of explanations, uh, the use of, uh, of uh, notes from the designer of, ex of uh, examples, the visual representation, the way uh, rules are laid out by Academy Games, the splash page, love the splash page. Whether it's a comic or rule book, give me a splash page. So production value if you know academy games expect it to be extremely high 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 gameplay wonderful it's light it handles a bigger group more than two play is quick things are determined fast pick if you don't want them all because they do play similarly pick them by the theme that you think you will most enjoy simple as that and asymmetric in this one Mm. Chief, see you guys later. Amtag.